Hey there, and welcome to this week's Sunday Musings. If you're new to this, every Sunday I take a little bit of time and I talk to you about something that's been on my mind. If you're interested in learning more detail about each of my weekly topics, please don't hesitate to check out my Medium blog. The link is right here. Again, each week that where I talk here, I also write there. So this week, I want to talk to you a little bit about allyship, advocacy, and championship. It's been on my mind a lot because I've been working with Women in Bio Group in San Francisco, along with the chapters in SoCal and Seattle, on the third of our collaborative series on allyship. In the last couple of months we've been planning, there have been a lot of conversations, and it's really had me think a little bit about this topic. If you'd like to check out the uh, workshop that's coming up, it is absolutely available and free to register, and I'll have a link in the comments for you to look at as well. So, what is allyship and what does it mean to me? And let's talk about that. Let's start off with saying that I can only tell you my views, and I believe that allyship has a lot of different meanings for a lot of different people. Foundationally, however, I think allyship is a journey that we take. It will be very different for each of us, but it really starts with a fundamental or foundational desire to learn. And part of that learning is learning to recognize where you can be an ally, how you can be an ally, and what allyship is really all about. So, I think the journey of allyship begins with a desire to help others achieve the same level of entry, acceptance, and privilege as you yourself do. And that's why it's very personal to everyone. Every one of us has a different level of access a different level of privilege and different things that we have privilege and access to that others don't. Just as there are others around us that have access to things that we don't. That means all of us can be allies and in turn benefit from allyship. But I talk in the title of this about allyship, advocacy, and championship. And I really feel that those are basically a pyramid. You start with the foundation of allyship. It's about learning, learning to recognize where you can act. It's a commitment to learn ways so that you can create and promote a culture of equality and inclusion. It's also a commitment to unlearn those ideas and behaviors and patterns that may not be in alignment with a culture of inclusivity, equality, and equity. So, if allyship is the foundation, and it's really about learning, one of the things that I also believe you need when you try and learn new habits is to practice them. And you need to practice those skills over and over again until they become muscle memory. You'll make mistakes. That's okay. Learn from them. So the first steps in allyship, in addition to learning, are starting to vocalize and point out where you see inequities. It's part of training yourself to view, because if you're aware, then you can start acting. If you don't see the differences, you can't move on. Okay, so that's allyship. And again, my medium blog goes into a lot more detail. I'm going to basically tell you that I believe there are two action steps to being an ally in addition to that education and self-learning and observation that you need to work on. The first is to speak up and spotlight the differences that you see when they're happening, the differences in access. If you can't spotlight and speak up and point them out, then you're not observing them and it's part of teaching yourself to see and educate yourself on where these differences are. The other thing is, start to speak up when someone is not in the room that should be and see if you can invite them into the room. Now we're starting to move into what I believe is the next step above allyship, and that is advocacy. However, 
it's a huge step to take to start with allyship, and it takes courage to speak up and to start to act because not everybody can do it. Not everybody is in a position. Allyship, advocacy, and championship are inherently by themselves acts of privilege. If you're scared or you're in a place where things can happen to you that would reduce your own access and your own privilege in a way that's detrimental to your well-being or to that of your family and friends. For example, if you're the sole primary financial contributor to your house and your act of allyship and speaking up costs you your job, that's maybe not a position where you can afford at that moment. I'm not saying that everybody needs to step up, although that is the absolute ideal, and I hope one day that we all can. If you are in a position where you cannot be an ally, there are many other things you can do, and people will disagree with me on this, but until you're in a position where you can speak out, there are three or four things that I think you can do. Consider those that you're seeing prevented from the privilege and access you have. Think about how they're being negatively impacted. And ask yourself, are you okay to sit back and watch that? Because if you sit back and bear witness to it, that is the same as approving or agreeing that it's acceptable. And if you do not agree that that lack of access, that discrimination, or those unconscious bias and microaggressions, if you don't agree with them, then you can't bear witness and stay with them. So something that you can do is to step away if you can't speak up. It's also something to think about because if you're not okay with what's going on, but you're unable to act right now for various reasons, personal reasons. Consider that maybe it might be time to start shifting and looking for a new job or new friends to spend time with or to find yourself in an environment where you can speak out safely. There is safety that comes in numbers, so finding others with similar thoughts and feelings can provide you with shelter and strength and security as you push forward to change. And finally, if there is no safe place that you can be, consider supporting these groups that are public in their advocacy and championship in other ways, like donations of time, donations of money. There are many ways we can support these agencies that promote actively the advocacy and championship of equal rights, equal privilege, and equal access of diversity and inclusion, and sometimes you can be an ally in the shadows, doing small and more discreet actions to nudge things towards that betterness, until you're in a place where you're safe and ready to step out. So that's allyship. Let's talk a little bit about moving into advocacy. I consider advocacy to be the next step after allyship. When you've practiced and you have muscle memory, and you can witness and you see what's going on and you can speak about it and identify when you see those problems. Advocacy is the next step where you start acting on those things and that may be difficult and you may have to practice it until it becomes muscle memory. Advocacy has many, many forms, but generally you might include things like actively speaking out to ensure representation within organizations within your company and at events, actively working to ensure that you invite people to the table so that there is a diverse group that represents the world around you. It also means speaking out actively when you see someone wronged, not sitting back. Advocates may help focus the attention on those whose voices are not heard by using amplification repeating what was said and attributing to who said it. This can help force people to recognize the original speakers. And they can also be sponsors to people who are not represented 
to actively open doors and bring opportunities to those who are underrepresented. There's a huge spectrum in advocacy. And as you increase your actions as an advocate, you can evolve into what I call a champion. Champions are the people who provide you with opportunities and visibility, not only within your organization, but across multiple organizations, across society. This can be ways of recommending women, uh, people of color, people who are LGBTQAI+, bringing them into speaking opportunities, bring them into meetings or into project groups where they may not have had that opportunity. Champions do everything listed as an advocacy, only they take it to the next level. A champion in a way is somebody who has comfort and security and confidence in advocacy and is embraced as part of their own personal brand. I believe, as I said earlier, that there's a cycle of allyship and advocacy and championship. While you can be an ally to others, there's situations where you will require allies to help you achieve the same level as others. All of us are not created equal. In fact, none of us are. And none of us have the same access. But there are people out there who suffer from far less access than maybe somebody like I do, who has the privilege of being a white woman. And I'm blessed with that. But it also means I have a responsibility to use the power and authority and responsibility and all of the privilege that I have to help someone else. Maybe somebody who's a person of color, who's transgender, who is part of the, as we're in June, part of the LGBTQAI plus brigade, there's so many people out there that are underrepresented. And it's, I think, my privilege to reach out a hand and see what I can do. I would love to hear your thoughts on allyship, advocacy, and championship. Until next week, we'll see you soon.